circles now last week I uploaded a video crystal pagan witchcraft 101 casting circles part one where I talked about the who what when and where of circle casting now today I'm going to demonstrate the how as promised so um, I won't chit chat you up let's just get right to it shall we okay so there are a bunch of different ways really no shortage of different ways to cast a circle um, so today I'm going to be showing you one of the more traditional ways to do it and a non-traditional Christo pagan or my non-traditional Christo pagan uh, twist or basically how I cast a circle for the most part when I do cast I had to um, sit on my bedroom floor here on the only the only place I really have the space to do this. This is not typically where I would cast a circle when I do, but for the sake of this video, I'm sitting here with the tools and stuff that I'm gonna be needing to get started. So let's get started. <laughs> now it's really quite simple. Once you have the basic steps down, casting a circle, um, once you have a the steps down you can twist it and flip it however you like however suits you really uh, so step one is to gather everything that you'll need all your ingredients all your tools not just for the circle casting but also for the ritual or spell you spell work you'll be doing once your circle is cast Step two would be to cleanse your space and your tools. There are a few different ways that you can do this. Again, um, by your preference. I like to use Palo Santo because sage is a lot like a, a spiritual bleach. It will cleanse everything, uh, negative and positive energy. So I like to use Palo Santo to cleanse the unwanted energy. And how I would do this I will light it, waft it around all the ingredients that I'll be using, but also in the air in a circle of motion around me or I'll walk around in a circle just cleansing the space around me. So the things that I will be using to cast my circle and that are traditionally used in circle casting, especially um, in Wicca or with like older, more traditional witches. I will be using my chalice, which I typically fill with water, either moon water or water that I've blessed, um, a ritual dagger or athme. I have a vial of water. This is moon water, but again, you can use tap water, water that you've blessed, purified water, choice is yours. I have a dish of salt, mm -hmm. crystals that I'm going to be used or using that, that kind of fit my purpose or the point of what I'm doing, incense, and candles of different colors. Now step three is going to be to determine the physical bounds of your circle. How big or how small you're going to make that around yourself. And once you figure that out, you are going to cleanse again, sort of, with either a ritual broom. If you don't have a ritual broom, that's fine. I also don't have a ritual broom, so you can just use your hand if you like, or you can completely skip this step since we did an original cleansing already to begin with and what you will do is take your hands and sweep uh, in a circular motion clockwise 
unless you're doing black magic, in which case you can do counterclockwise. But you're going to sweep back and forth like you would with a broom in a clockwise motion around your circle, the bounds of the circle that you have set for yourself and cleanse out any lingering unwanted energy and kind of set the intentions of the steps that we'll be taking next. For step four, you're going to mark each of the five cardinal points. And you're gonna mark those points around your circle um, with a representation of each of the five elements. And I am saying five elements because I'm including spirit. If you don't wanna include spirit, then just the four elements, earth, air, water, fire, north, will represent earth so you can use a white green or brown candle as well as salt or soil to mark your north point east will represent air you can use a blue or white uh, candle or even incense to mark your east point South will represent fire. So you can use a white, orange, yellow, or red candle to mark your self point. You can also use um, incense. You can use any crystals that are like reddish or orangish or have like a fiery tone. And West will represent water. So you can use a white or blue candle. You can use sea glass, seashells, Sea water, any water from any body of water, even tap water, um, a small vial or chalice of water to mark west, really whatever you choose to represent water. <laughs> if you can't tell which direction is facing which way, you can always use your phone and download the compass app and it'll tell you as you stand around uh, which way is which. Now, traditionally, uh, most wishes that I know have heard about or read of throughout history use north or east as the starting point. Now, if you are going to do the fifth point spirit, you can either place that in between whichever of the cardinal points and elements um, that you feel closer to, or you can place it in the center of your circle with yourself. I usually put spirit in the center with me because that's where I like it. And I will typically use um, my Triquetra symbol to represent spirit or my triple moon goddess um, and or a purple or silver candle or a cross. For spirit, I highly recommend using whatever you feel like uh, personifies your beliefs or your spiritual side and now that we have all the stuff that we need and we've marked out our four or five points around our circle we can move on to the next step all right so for step five you're going to use each elemental representation to bless your circle so for the sake of example I'm going to start facing north, which is the direction I'm currently facing, and I, north representing earth, I'm going to use salt as my representation of that. So I'm going to start facing north, and I'm going to say out loud, I call upon earth to bless and protect this circle. Typically, I would be standing for this, but my camera stand is shorter than I am, so that wouldn't be quite helpful. Um, now you're going to take your salt, or whatever your representation is, and you're going to walk around your circle in a clockwise motion, always clockwise, again, unless you're doing black with magic, none of my business. And you're gonna repeat as you walk around until you come back to your starting point north. So, I call upon Earth to bless and protect this circle. Okay, now we're back facing North. 
you'll put that representation down. If you have a candle there as well, light it. If all you have there is a candle, light it when you call upon earth and walk around the circle with it anyway. You will then move on to your next cardinal point east and light your incense or your candle, whatever your representation of air is, while you say, I call upon air to bless and protect this circle. If it's incense you're using or anything that smokes, once it's lit, you're going to, again, repeat that three times while you walk around the circle until you come back to east. Wafting your incense along the circle along your way until you come back to your starting point. And then you will move on to each of your next cardinal points, repeating the same step. Pick up and light your candle or incense. Um, if, what, if you're using water, you'll sprinkle and splash that around the circle if you want to. Now, if you are doing spirit, once you get to spirit, you're going to call upon whatever or whoever you believe in or choose to work with and invoke them asking for protection and guidance um, in your endeavors. So I, of course, the basis of my belief being Christianity, would either call upon the Holy Trinity or Jesus Christ. Um, if you like to work with archangels, you can call upon whichever angel will aid in your cause, a cause that is specific to that angel's particular talents. If you don't know what that would be, check out a video I posted a few weeks ago about archangels and their particular talents. <laughs> Now, these are, for the sake of this video, my representations of spirit. So once you have invoked spirit, you will, if you were sitting, stand up. Um, if you're already up, great. So we're going to get up, take our representation of spirit around our circle clockwise, always clockwise, three times. And I might say something along the lines of, I cast this circle thrice about to cast the evil spirits out. And I'll do that three times in clockwise motion. You can say whatever you like, really. Whatever comes to mind or whatever I just said, completely up to you. Now, once you've invoked your final element, you can sit in the center of your circle with the rest of the things that you'll be using for your ritual or to cast your spell. At this point, the, your circle is cast. It is open. So I like to sit and meditate and envision a ball of warm, glowing light starting in the center of my chest, growing until it's filled my entire body and then it has radiated outward until it's filled the entirety of my circle. And I envision pretty much this large glowing dome of protective light that is now vibrating energy within my circle. Now, it is very important that once your circle is cast, you do not leave it for any reason. Um, unless you've closed the circle at this point. If you do need to leave your circle in the middle of your spell work, you need to cut out a doorway with either your athame, athme, however you prefer to pronounce it, or a wand, or your hand, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you cut out a doorway. So uh, you go pause whatever you're doing, take the object you'll be using, and slice, maybe I should do it on this side, <laughs> slice out a literal doorway, step out of it, and close it immediately behind you. If you don't take this step, you will break your circle and essentially undo all of the work that you just did leading up until this point. Releasing the energy that you've collected so far and letting in other energies that you may have attracted. We don't want that. So just, if you're going to go through all of this, do it the right way. 
Now, your final step. Step seven. Once you have finished your ritual or your spell work or your meditation or whatever you were doing, you are going to close your circle so it is now safe for you to exit. How are we gonna do that? We are going to face the circle or the cardinal point that you started at and do more or less the same thing you did to cast the circle, but in reverse. So I started north. I'm going to grab my salt. Facing north, I'm going to say, thank you earth for blessing and protecting this circle. I now release you. I'm gonna go all the way around in a counterclockwise motion because we are now closing our circle so we are going to do the opposite of what we did when we started. And then I'm going to move to west instead of east, again, counterclockwise. I'm going to thank water and release it, then move to south, thank fire, release it, and then to east, thank air and release it until I come back to north. And then I'll come to the center of my circle. And at this point, again, with spirit, do whatever feels right to you. I like to recite the Lord's Prayer or say a little prayer myself. Um, thank your deity or element or angel for um, protecting and guiding you throughout this whole process. And that's it. You're done. Circle cast, circle close. Your energy will be, the energy that you collected in your circle, your intentions will wash out, just be sent out into the world once you've closed your circle and they will push out any negative or unwanted energies on their way. You're good. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, <laughs> Let me know what else you would like me to make some Crystal Pagan Witchcraft 101 videos about in the comment section below. I love you all very much and I'll see you next week. Bye!